No, that cat. That cat, he's bad. He's like a toddler. I'm sorry. Um, where am I going, Lord? Father. Dear Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come to you um, because this is, Father, this is the days of Noah, God. Your word, um, it, it just, your scriptures cannot be broken. And because of that, when prayers are not answered, people are led into very deep confusion. And then there's um, looking at other people's prayers and answered and, and wondering why theirs are not. Father God, I need your help to help me figure out how to explain this thoroughly. Thank you for showing me the vision I keep having. Father God, I, I, I come into agreement right now in the name of Jesus that, that the body, we all, Father God, hear from you, that we all receive. Father God, I ask for open ears right now in the name of Jesus. I ask for, I ask for open ears, God. I ask for wisdom to be poured, Father God, in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we need to be um, flooding the streets with signs and wonders and 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 we don't see small things come to pass so we stop we don't do the big things lord so i'm asking to get for you to give me wisdom for you to give me every scripture for you to put your literal words on my lips god um I ask that you be with me the holy spirit be with us in jesus mighty name our king amen okay so there is a very big issue in the body right the question is why do some see healing and some do not that that's the how we are in the body but how do some receive healing and i'm talking about it is impossible miracles you answered my prayer. You repeated the thing I said I had in my mind. Um, you you know, how how are some people able to experience this and some people are not? Hey, my um, my sweet brother's in here. How are, are, are some people are not? And, and you know what the one thing I hear all the time? Hey, my other brother's in. The one thing I hear... Um, the first thing I hear is, um, well, Christina, I prayed. And, and it's so, it's just so interesting. It's so interesting. So I, I can only explain to you like how I got healed, like my back, my PTSD, my leg, right? My, my broken ankle. Um, and then my issues of not having healing, um, like with my daughter. So when I got healed of my spine, my scoliosis, right? Um, I went into, uh, I'm one of those people where I'll be last. Uh, I, I, I don't mind, um, I don't mind being last. My father healed me of this scoliosis right here. And you, like, I don't know if people understand. My daughter was born and they said to me that she was deaf. And I was like, that, I said, thank you, Lord. Me being ignorant how that happened. My, my third child is a daughter, and I'm super excited. I said, the Lord blessed me with a deaf child. Why? Because Christina's native language is sign language. I have two, my both of my biological parents are deaf. I said, like, oh, God gave me a deaf baby. And being just dumb and ignorant, I did not get a second opinion. So my daughter did not learn language. She heard it from us, yes, but... She didn't learn and I didn't teach her language like I did with the first two for literally the first two years of her life. And something on the inside of me was like, this something is wrong. This is not right. 
Now, I don't know if you know, getting tested, testing a baby for if they're deaf, they have a monitor at the hospital, but in, uh, in Los Angeles, you there's a um, there's a deaf clinic um, over there, I think on Figueroa, somewhere in South Central, and you have to be three in order to get tested. Long story short, we found out my daughter's not deaf. So here I am going through my daughter's first years of life, just done, just feeling stupid. Not really, and mind you, I was in the world. I was not, you know, spirit-filled. I, I, I definitely was in the world for sure. Um, the Lord was always with me, but I was not saved at all. So, so she knows English, she knows sign language. It took her until the age of four um, and to start speaking. And I'm not talking about speaking like a four-year-old would speak, speaking like an infant would speak. The, the, the baby gibberish, she started at four. Most people start, most people's babies start baby gibberish at six months. My, my daughter did not speak baby gibberish until four. I, I, I'm, I'm especially talking to the mothers. I'm especially talking to my, my brothers who have children with special needs. I beat myself up like I cannot explain to you. I said, Christina, you're so stupid. I said, you, 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 you didn't fight for your daughter. Now she's, she could have had language and, and speech therapist. And, and, and now she's for barely starting at baby gibberish. My daughter is 13 years old now. I, I really need you to hear me. My daughter is 13. She cannot read. She cannot read three letter words. When I tell you my heart is broken in places that I just, I can't put into English. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Now here go God healing me in my spine. I'm baffled. I'm grateful. And I'm thankful. But I said, God, why me? Why not heal my daughter first? And I sounded, I, I, only people with children like this can really understand. I said, God, I'm so grateful. I don't have this back pain. I, I, I have an actual miracle in my bones, in my flesh. But my daughter still can't speak. We done MRIs. We tested the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere. We did all the tests you can name. It's done. We There's no diagnosis. Zero. That tells me it's spiritual, number one. Number two, when we experience healing, what we do is we step into the flesh of Father God, how? We step into trying to get a worldly understanding of okay how did this happen was it something i did was it cuz i prayed cuz i dedicate cuz i'm on my knees every night because i intercede in the spirit. like we start to recount our steps of how we did it but i had the question i said lord why would you heal me first and not my daughter my father speaks to me about small things he answers my prayers about birds he has not answered me about my own daughter. I cannot explain it to you. That is one of the most the most hardest things I've, I've, I've ever really had to just deal with and say God is still good. It's the strangest thing. Why am I healed? Why do, literally, I raised a boy from the dead, two people with cancer. Y'all was here when, when the, the woman's blood flow stopped. And 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 countless prophetic things after the next and and healing here healing here and healing and burning here but my own daughter my own daughter it's nothing didn't hear nothing nothing <sighs> with my own confusion i asked god why i said father god why you heal me often and, and 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 I don't I don't see the the breakthrough the miracles and I have prayed over her, I have anointed her head, I I have spoken in tongues over this child now, 
I have brought her to the altar. I, she is baptized in water. She she has she sees the angels, y'all. And I'm not saying dreams. I'm talking about in real life. She can see the angels. And and sometimes we we don't turn to the word of God and and say, you know what? Let me stop trying to figure out this and this and the mechanics and what did I do and and how is this possible and 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 just literally walk through truth I don't know how that changed walk through um the authority and the truth of God the only way I can explain that I got healed is I woke up I woke up that's it I asked God for prayer. I, I'm sorry. I prayed to God. I said, God, you had a conversation in this house. I said, Lord, you have to heal me of my PTSD. Something is wrong with me. I almost fought my son's father, my uh, my daughter's father in the parking lot of Home Depot. He dusts her butt off because she fell off one of the tractors and he dusts her butt off. And I said, I, I snapped getting ready don't you ever touch my daughter's butt i said you really gonna see about me you play with me if you want to don't you ever touch my i got real south central inglewood on him in in the in the middle of home depot put my kids in the car and i can i came out and, and and i put the kids in the car and and before he could touch the door i was gonna i was going ham and i and he yelled at me in a way that it broke my heart because I was like, Christina, you're weird. Like, you're sick. Babe, you're sick. He's like, that's my daughter. He's like, I can wipe her, but she fell. And I was just like, Christina, you're sick. Babe, you're sick. You, you can't even let the man be a father. You want him to be a good dad. But here you are reacting off of triggers because of your abuse. I said, sis, you're sick. So I asked God. I said, Lord, take this PTSD from me. I asked him. I said, God, I need you to heal me of this PTSD. I don't know how. I've done therapy. I've done drugs. I've done the teas. I've done the incense. I've done the meditation. I've done everything there is to, in this natural world to do. The, the massages. I've done everything. I've done acupuncture. I did everything. Nothing could heal me from this PTSD other than me going to my father says, I'm done. I can't carry this no more. That's what I did. Now, you have to understand. Um, yes, we're supposed to be specific, but you have to remember our father is a God of abundance. That's the truth. He is a God of abundance. I said, Father, heal. I'm, I'm thinking because he knows my heart. My 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 triggers of broken glass, slamming doors, people screaming, um, especially babies. And and also like there are signs. If you've been grew up like me, you might know the signs. Children wet in their bed. That's a sign. That's a sign. A random acts of aggression in small babies that weren't like that. That's a sign somebody is touching that child. Trying to smear crap on themselves, smear poop on themselves. That's a sign of sexual abuse. I'm, I'm whoever that needs to hear that. I said, Christina, you need to be healed. Now, knowing that my father is a God of abundance, I have deep triggers. I, there are certain movies. I have never watched the movie Precious. I never plan on. I, 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 the only last movie of terrible abuse like that was um uh the I can Tina Turner movie that movie bothers me and scarred me to this day I can't watch stuff like that because it does something to me now I'm healed now I'm healed but before unhealed could not do it and used to get angry if something came on and my, I'm telling you my ex-husband he would look at me because I'm about to pop off don't play that stuff in my house my, my trauma and my triggers were awful. I said, Father God, I tried everything and I don't know what else to do. I said, I'm not normal. And, and I'm raising my kids as if they're being abused. I said, this is not normal. 
So I had a conversation with my father. I had prayer for my father with my father. I didn't hear a yes, but I know the truth. Truth is yes and amen. So I know the truth. Yes and amen. I gave it to him. I walked away. Didn't think nothing else of it. Long story short, my uncle Sam died. I go to California. I go to California. I go to California. I spend a night at my auntie's house, right? A few days before the funeral. Um, I wake up and my back feels weird. It don't feel the like the, the stiffness the, in my muscles. I don't feel the aching. I don't have the... I always used to crack my back. Put one leg up in and over. And then crack, it would crack my whole spine. I, I know how to do it. Just to get like temporary relief. Didn't have the urge to do it. I woke up and I stretched. I said, what in the world? I said, something is wrong. I feel weird. I feel weird. Hey, my love. I feel weird. So I get up. I tell my cousin, check my back. Because everyone in my whole family know I have scoliosis. It's evident. It's everybody know. So I said, check my back. And she say, she said, Chrissy, because that's my my family coming. They said, Chrissy. Um, she said, I don't see nothing. It's not there. I said, girl, you're not paying attention. Go on. So anyways, do the funeral. And I'm carrying on about my, my, my trip, you know, the family funeral thing. I get back home to my husband. And soon be expensive. I left up my shirt to check my back. And 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 y'all know the story. He couldn't find it, so I had to go to the hospital. That photo is me still like I don't believe nobody. I went to get an X ray. I paid think thirty five dollars to get that picture on a disc. And and and. When they finally pulled it up at UPS, because ain't nobody got a CD-ROM anymore, right? They pulled it up at U UPS, and I'm bawling, hollering, thanking, and praising the Lord like a crazy person. She said, what? What's wrong? I don't understand. It looks fine. I said, girl, that's the point. Since I was eight, I've had scoliosis. Yes, Victoria, for sure. Since I was, do you understand? I got thrown into a metal, like, door frame of a closet trying to get my stepdad from whooping my mom's behind. He threw me like a piece of rice. I flew in the air literally backwards. Boom. Hit the, hit the, hit the, the, the and back, back in the old day, I'm showing my age, but back in those days, they used to have metal door frames on some apartments. Since I was eight years old, and here I am, 30 some. I don't remember, 30 something. That's two years, a year ago, two years ago. No, that was here, so like a year or something ago. And and here I am, 30, um, like 35 or whatever. And and it's it's just gone. It's just gone. Now, y'all, I did not pray for this. I I didn't pray for healing. In my spine. I did not. I said, God, heal my PTSD. I, I remember what I said to God. Heal my PTSD. Heal my triggers. Heal my anxiety and my fear. And me always, you know, helicopter mom. Right? That's what I said. But but, but my father healed. He's, remember, the truth of... Uh, the truth of God is what is what allows us to heal and receive healing. The truth of God is that he is a God... Of abundance. Of abundance. That he does. Let's read it. In, in Exodus 3 I believe. Hallelujah. Help me Lord. Whew. Yes. Exodus 3.20. Now to him. Capital H. Who is able to do exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all. That we ask or think. According to the power of. Listen, that works in us. That works in us. To him be glory in the church um, by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I don't like not finishing that. I know this is the truth. Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. The think part is where my healing resides. I need you to understand that. 
the sink part is where my scoliosis, that's where it resides. Above all that we ask or think. I asked him for the PTSD. I wasn't even thinking about my spine. I promise you, I, it never came out of my mouth, ever. I don't even know if it was a desire in my heart. I have no idea. I have lived with it for so long. I have no idea. If we don't read the word of God and write this thing on our heart, if we don't really, I'm talking about really read the word of God, it is not a race. It is not a competition of who know more. It is not, it is not a, a battle of the genius and spiritual battles. Who can, it is reading the word of God. He blesses me in ways I never even asked for. I only put his truth, the word of God, on the inside of me. That's number one. That is step number one. This is after four years of reading the word over and over and over again. And I still don't really fully understand it. But I had to put this somewhere and I have to change my mind and say, Christina, it's not about the natural circumstances. It is about the only thing that is true on this earth, which is the word of God. It woke up healed. That kind of healing is impossible. It's impossible. I need to, they told me, they, this evil doctor I don't know where she at, but anyway, this evil doctor told me when I was 14, she said, yep, because she, because if you ever know, people are really wicked. I don't know if anyone has experience with deaf people, but when somebody finds out your mother or father is deaf, what they like to do is, hey, my love, what they like to do is say slick stuff because your mother can't hear. So she basically gave me a workers. She said, oh, you're eventually um, going to suffocate and die because of your scoliosis. I lived in fear since I was 14 about this scoliosis, knowing that I'm going to die. Every time I had an asthma attack, I thought it was my spine. Because literally my, my ribs were shifting, pinching certain things. <sighs> the only way it could be healed was through surgery. They take the this, this scalp. They go down the middle, they put two brackets, they put rods and they and, and, and screws and they basically hammer your thing straight. That's the surgery that I needed. I do not have a scar on my back. There's nothing. Nothing. Now, Luna, don't do it. Now with the person who who was dead at the at the um at the urgent care that teenage boy who was dead I was the only person who called on the name of Jesus the boys I I explain the story but every time I think of it it makes me feel sick and chills cuz it's still very scary to me the boys lips were blue purple I have never, ever seen anyone like that in my life. There's veins coming up across. He was not breathing at all. I don't know when he stopped breathing, but sure enough, not when they pulled up. Not when they, you know, we brought him in with the wheelchair. All I know is I touched him in his um, chest part and I did not pray. I, I I just screamed, miracles in the name of Jesus. There is, listen, in fear, because I'm not going to lie, act like I'm superwoman. I was terrified. That the, the boy looks 17 years old. I'm not going to act like I wasn't terrified. I was terrified. I have never, I have a 17 year old. That, that did something to me because I also have a special place in my heart for babies, for children, period. I was terrified. But the truth of Jesus is already on the inside of me. 
whether I'm devastated, whether I'm in complete, utter fear, when I'm about to pee on myself in an urgent care, the truth is already on the inside of me. So when I laid my hands on him and I said, miracles in the name of Jesus, that Jesus didn't come with doubt or hesitation. It wasn't a prayer. I called on the name of the Lord because I know who he is and I know anything can be done if I call on the name of him. It was not a prayer. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? We cannot beg and plead with Jesus because we're approaching his throne wrong. We're his children. Why are we begging? Why are we screaming? And I'm talking to myself too because I do the same. I just did it last week. But I have to continue to Take my thoughts captive and subject this dang on flesh all the time. Constantly, I'm warring with my flesh. Why are we approaching God's throne as if we are not children? Our children, think of your children. Think of your children. Do they have to cry and plead and beg you for you to make them a plate? For them to get something to drink? No. You're going to be like, what is wrong with you? Why are you screaming and hollering and crying for a juice box? What's wrong with you? What happened? Because that's not the truth of who you are. That's not the truth of who Jesus is. We are approaching his throne and it ain't right. It's not right. That's Abba means father. Papa, I'm going through it. I need help. Now, now, we can cry out to the Lord. That's weeping and weeping and supplications in the word of God. That's Old Testament. But when you're crying out to him, like begging, like he's not really a good father. That's when it's wrong. That's that's when it's wrong. That's when it's not correct. You you at the wrong door. That's not how, remember the, the word, everyone is scared of this. The scriptures say, the scriptures say, uh, I don't know where it is. I think it's in Matthew. He's he going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and perform miracles? And, and, and he says, get away from me. I never knew you. We are not approaching his throne correctly. I know my father. If I was terrified, I said, I said, miracles in the name of Jesus. That boy popped his head up. I literally collapsed and I was that close to pissing on myself. I did a little because, you know, it get loose after you have children. That's women business. A little came out, but I almost peed myself. It was horrific. The, 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 the. His natural skin color, because remember his sweater was up. The natural skin color come up like something out of a cartoon. And, and his face come back up to his normal skin color. And he pop his head up. I crashed to the floor. I say, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Almost pissed in front of everybody. There were other children, other parents, other men. Nobody helped me call in the name of Jesus. But guess what? I know the name of Jesus. I know who is Jesus. I know he will answer me. There has got to be a truth on the inside of us for devastating situations. There has to be a truth on the inside of us for devastating situations where our natural mind cannot comprehend. I cannot comprehend in the natural that I worked up the nerve to touch a dead person. But on the inside of me, past the natural is a supernatural body. That is stronger than anything you have ever seen. My spirit body is off the chain. My spirit body needs to constantly be fed by the word of God. Constantly. My mind needs to be constantly renewed in the truth. The truth is if I call on the name of my father, I will be saved. And if I call on the name of my father for someone else, they will be saved. And I have that testimony and that experience. But I am not special. There's nothing special about me. There, uh, there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special. 
I just have my father and literally a revelation of the truth that he lives on the inside of me. And, and that comes out in every situation. I call on the name of the Lord today. Y'all don't understand. Uh, my, my tires are balding, y'all. My tires are balling and it's getting scary because I drive a stick shift. So I only have two wheel drive. Today is snowing and, and my car starts sliding and I, my school, my Bible college is up, is up a mountain. I'm talking about a very steep mountain. There's only a guard. I said, I said, Jesus, your angels. That's all I said. Jesus, your angels. And my car doing like this. And you know how it's not turning, but it's just going. To, my car went like this. And I, my, my hands did not move because I was like nervous. Do you guys see something right here? Or is it my glasses? Lord. Hydroplane, that's it. <laughs> And, and when it was done, I said, thank you, Lord, for your angels. I felt it um, weird, like at the bottom of my car. I don't know how to explain it. You know how you can feel that your car is heavy? There is something weird at, at the bottom of my car. There is a revelational truth of abiding me and I in you that I got. There is a revelational truth about I'm his daughter that I got. I'm his daughter. There's a revelational truth that no, 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 no. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. He gave his son so, so, so we don't perish. He didn't, he didn't want to see not one of us perish. He, you know, John 360, he sent his only begotten son for us. That I don't understand it. But it's on the, there is a revelational truth on the inside of me about different parts of this word. I do not know the whole Bible. I barely can understand this. And I got one of the, tried to get the easiest version for myself. You know what I'm saying? But there are certain things that I had to come into a revelational truth. Christina, it is not about what you have or you don't have. It is about what God says. It is not about the natural circumstances. It is about the supernatural blessing and favor my father gave me many, many, many years ago. That I am adopted. That I'm literally called a daughter. That the word calls us royal priesthood. Oh. When, when healing gets confusing, especially outwardly, right? I have the gift of healing. So how come I can't heal my daughter, right? That part gets confusing. Thank you, Lord. Wherever you want to take this, God, because I really don't know. Here come the enemy with, by my, by my sweet brother, here come the enemy with doubt and hesitation. Christina, if you pray for your daughter again and it doesn't work, are you going to feel some type of way? Check your spirit and check your relationship with God before you even go there. I had to really let my children go. Father God, in your timing. Maybe he wants to do, I have no idea. Maybe he wants to do um, her healing and a testimony with her healing where there has to be more unbelievers. I don't know. Maybe there needs, it needs to be done for more of whatever gives God the most glory. I give it up. I don't stress anymore about, oh, I got healing on my ankle. They said three to six months, but here I am walking without a boot. I only wore it for a week and I got healed in three weeks. I don't take my, my healings here and start comparing them why, why I can't see it here. All I know is the truth of God. When I call on the name of Jesus, he answers me. That's all I know. I know that, that he did not come for only some of us. He came for everyone. Every last one of them. But if we don't have a revelational truth on the inside of us, we even approach healing with type of hesitancy. Look at the parts of of the Bible where the, the disciples were not successful. He, Jesus said, how come we couldn't cast it out? 
He said, this kind can only be cast out by, by, by prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. It has nothing to do with the demons. It has nothing to do with the strongholds. Everything to do with us. Everything, if we, that, do you understand what a burn victim looked like? Times that by often. The father said he, get, he gets thrown into the fire and the water often. Not only do you burn the child, the demon burning the child, burn and healed and then burned again and then healed. Scar on top of scar, but drowning the child often? That's insane to me. So think about, you have to, you have to visualize these things. The disciples saw the child, immediate hesitation, immediate fear, immediate doubt. Can I do this? Look, look, look at the severity of the child. Look at the severity of the child. It is the natural. It is, it is the, what we see in the natural. Our eyes cannot be fed into the natural of, of, of the deterioration of a body with cancer, the hair falling off, the side effects of chemo. I cannot be fed by those things. I need to be fed by the word of God. This is the word of truth. He says this kind can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Time with God. Fasting, that means subjecting my flesh. Time with God? Time with God. Sis, time with God. Do you hear it? It got enough. Those demons are under our feet. Every It says all kinds of sicknesses and diseases we can heal them from. But it's us. It be us. God, can you do it? He already gave us the power to do it. Why you even go over there? Father God, give me the strength. Remove any doubt or hesitation in me now because I got a work to do. I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. He didn't say pray for him to healing. He already gave us authority to do it. Why are we going back to him as if we didn't believe him in the first place? We are not filling ourselves with the word of God. And, 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 and it's not us. It's religion. Religion teach us to do that. Oh, you got to pray. You, you, you got to get on your knees, sis. No, I don't need to get on my knees. I don't need to get on my knees. I command healing in the name of Jesus. I don't even know this person. I don't need to know their name. I don't need them. I don't need that little boy to be awake when he hear me. I command it. I command it in the name of Jesus. I didn't need his, <laughs> I didn't need his permission. I didn't need his agreement. He was unconscious. The boy was not breathing. I said, in the name of Jesus. I said, miracles in the name of Jesus. That boy snapped up like this. There is something on the inside of us that has to be without hesitation, without fear. I know who my God is, period. I know who my God is. I cannot give this to you. This is you and your relationship with Christ. You have to read the word of God. You have to petition God. Father God, open my ears. I cannot remain stagnant. I cannot remain in a place of, 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 of hesitation and doubt. I refuse. Father God, open my, open my mind. Give me wisdom in the name of Jesus. And you read his word and say, I want revelation today about this. I want revelation today about this. Help me to meditate on this revelation that you've given me, God. Help me to repeat it over and over. Help me to subject my thoughts and my flesh to your truth, to the word of God. That's it. There is, there is literally nothing else. There, there is nothing else but get in your word and say, Father God, I must not know you enough. I must not know you enough, God. And I say that with humility. Teach me, Lord. You discipline those who you love. God, if I have ever doubted you, if I ever looked at the, the creator of everything with doubt and hesitation, Father God, I repent in the name of Jesus. That is not you. That is not your character. You are not a God of lack. You're not a God of what if. You're not a God of maybe I'll heal him today and not today. He said by his stripes, you are healed. Past tense. It's past tense. And I'm super hot. I, mm, I'm really hot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
ኮ የካንዳር አይት ሮስ ሸለራ አውሮ ፍተቲን ያሽሪያ I cannot find a church fan for nothing. And my voice is already gone cuz I got slain in the spirit today. I hit the floor hard. But I got no knots. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, listen. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Mm, I love you God. Thank you Jesus. Let me find something. I, this is what I I heard today and it blew my mind. 2 Corinthians 2 11. 2 11. if you would just take it, Lord. Take it from him, Lord. I'm going to read it. Um this is forgive the offender. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and the pa the passage I want you to pay attention to is verse 11. And um and I want to share something. Um this is when you have Now remember, we look at the scripture, right? But we we try not to take it out of context, right? Who is he talking to? This is Paul. He's talking to the church in Corinth. They only said Corinthians 1, Corinthians 2, because dang on letter to Corinthians is super long. But this is to the church at Corinth, right? People who already received Christ, remember this. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'm going to read it. I'm going to start at 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. For out of much afflict, affliction, excuse me, much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote to you. Sometimes we got to tell our brothers and sisters things that are not easy to hear. That's number one. Um, with many tears, not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have so abundantly for you. It says, but if, if anyone has caused grief, he has not grieved me. But all of you, to some extent, not to be too severe. He's talking about, I heard about some drama in your church. I heard about drama, right? He says, six, this punishment, which was inflicted by the majority, was sufficient for such a man. Seven says, so that on the contrary, you ought rather to forgive and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one be swallowed up with too much sorrow, right? Right? Talking about religion, we make mistakes in the church, in, in the body. I'm not talking about the building, I'm talking about us. We make mistakes. And boy, do we love to smack somebody over the head. I know I do. I've done it a few times. Forgive me, Lord. Now, when people make mistakes, when people step into religion, when 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 people step into religion, we we do love to be like, you got the spirit of fear. We do that. We do. I do. The Lord is working on me with that, with the spirit of offense, especially. Now it says, it says, for to this end, I also wrote that I might put you to the test, whether you are obedient in all things. Now, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Obedient in all things. What did Christ say about forgiveness? That's what he's talking about. So I'm going to keep going. Obedient in all things. Says now whom you forgive anything I also forgive. Talking like Christ right. For if indeed I have forgiven anything. I have forgiven that one of one for your sakes. In the presence of Christ. This is the part I want us to pay attention to. It says lest Satan should take advantage of us. Us. For we're not ignorant of his devices. What Now, I want you to pay attention to 11. Lest, lest Satan should take advantage of us. The devil, all the tricks, all the spirit of infirmities, epilepsy, all of that stuff. Spiritual oppression, all of that's supposed to be under our feet. And here go Paul say, lest Satan should take advantage of us. For we're not ignorant of his devices. Now, 
Paul is saying that Satan can have an open door and we can be taken advantage of if we don't what be obedient in all things. He's talking about when Christ said, you got to forgive others of their trespasses so that I may forgive you of yours. If we don't move in obedience, the enemy has opportunity. Now, this scripture is not just about forgiveness. We don't take the word and just be like, oh, it's only strictly. If we're not obedient in all things, I have to be obedient in the fact that my father and exactly who he said he is. I have to believe it. That's obedience. That's that's not just saying, oh, I'm saved. I'm baptized. You know, um, I, I've received Christ and, I, you know, I'm a prayer. No, there has to be an obedience in believing God is who he is on the inside. You understand this truth. There has to be a level of obedience where it says pray fervently, pray without ceasing with weeping and supplication. That's obedience to God. Mine is New King James Version because I can't. The Bible says Christ is a black man, not according to Revelation. Let me tell you something. If you want to give up and forfeit eternity over a skin color, you do you. But we don't do that over here. Absolutely insane. Anyways. Anyways. The Lord told me not to argue with people no more, so I'm not going to do it. We need to be obedient in all things. Father God, I do not understand why you sent your son to die for me. I I cannot explain to you how, how many years I have struggled with James, not James, John 3, 16. I, I cannot explain it. I can't explain it. That thing, I just didn't get it. I said, there's no way. Why would you send your son to die for me and get killed like this, viciously murdered like this for, for us? We are off the chain down here. It is horrific here. It's ghetto down here on earth. It's too much. But yet he's still. So people don't perish but have eternal life, that's, I, I don't understand it, but I believe it. Thank you, Lord. I bind all witchcraft, all soothsayers in the name of Jesus. Anyone trying to speak into this screen over me, I promise you the curse will not only jump back on your behind, but my father does not play about me. In Jesus' mighty name, our King, amen. He does not. I felt it right here. There is a revelational truth that's on the inside of me that I cannot explain. My father gave me authority. I can't really tell you what that looks like. I can't tell you where it comes from, where it's stored. I just know it's in there. That's it. And without hesitation and without doubt, right? I have my daughter. How can I do healings here, here, here? How can I have healings and not my baby girl? How can my little ankle, raggedy old ankle? I will trade my scoliosis, my ankle. What else he healed me from? Um, my PTSD. I would trade all that. I would get all of that back that my daughter may be healed. That's how much love I have for her. I would trade it without hesitation in a second in a heartbeat. I would, let's do it. But I can't. That's not how my father operates. In the truth that my father is good, that is a revelational truth that I quite don't understand, but I fully believe it. God, you are good. You created all these things for us and we don't appreciate it enough. We don't take advantage of it. We don't just stop and just say, Father God, I acknowledge you in this tree. I acknowledge you in the way that you made sunrises, Lord. Not us, but other people, because we do that. I know when I look at my daughter and I see that she's still not here, she still can't read. There's a revelational truth that does not help me. I mean, not help me. That does not hurt me. It doesn't hurt me. My father will do it in his time because I know who he is. 
I know that he is still good regardless of, of him not healing my daughter on my timing. Yes, her time is going to come. I'm not hurt. I'm not uh, paralyzed or, or um, looking at God with a side eye or questioning him. Mm -mm. That, that thing is on the inside of me and is stored and is never leaving. So I want you to understand when it comes to healing yourself and other people, it is not about how many scriptures of healing you memorize. It, it is not about how long you've been a Christian, how long you've been devotionals. It's about storing revelational truth on the inside of you and it, it being on the inside of you where at any given moment. Oh, I healed the lady on Mother's Day. Her knee, she had fluid in her knee. <laughs> she had fluid in her knee. I just remember her. Thank you, Lord. It's about, and when I'm in the store and the Lord says, stop, go back. And I say, yes, Lord. I go back and I said, um, sorry, excuse me, miss. I think the, the Lord want to heal you right now. He just... He just told me um, I need to stop. And she said, okay, here go my friend. She gonna say, uh, ma'am, what's going on with your knee? And I blurt out, fluid, like that, fluid. <laughs> All loud and awkward. <laughs> All loud and awkward, cause it just burst out of me like that. I said, fluid, and she's staring at me like this. Cause you know, old folks with their glasses, like that. She said, yeah, it's fluid. And I said, oh. I said, okay, God, it's go time. I was nervous. I was embarrassed because I blurted out fluid. And everybody was staring at me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'd be lying. You, y'all, I wish y'all could see me in person when I do this in person. I'm not perfect. I stutter. My voice cracks because I don't like speaking in front of people. But who, 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 you know, the flesh is in Christina is not more superior than who God is on the inside of me. That's it. I pray for her healing and, and I walked away. That's it. I, 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 I like to be by myself. I like to go to the store early in the morning because there's nobody there. That's me. Good night, my love. That's me. There has to be a revelational truth on the inside of you in order to operate in these giftings. And these giftings, you understand? I just, you have, oh, my mind, it does so much. Thank you, Lord, for it. Who's in this pantry? Huh? Oh, close that pantry when you finish. Thank you, Lord. Do you understand that, that, that? Do you understand that the disciples didn't have a portable scroll with them? Y'all know that? D they didn't have a portable scroll that they could pocket book size scroll that they could put into the their uh, satchel or whatever they use. I don't know what you want to call it. I like to imagine them in the flat. I, my imagination. They didn't have access like we have access, y'all. They did not have access like we have access. They're going to be like, you carry the Torah with you? And and evidence of the Messiah? Like, I could just hear Abraham. You carry... <laughs> I could just hear all of this. You carried it with you? And you didn't read it every day? I just... I, I know I'm going to be ashamed. I know we're going to have a conversation. <laughs> But the thing is, is that we can't take this for granted. We can't take this for granted. And it's not, like I said in the beginning, it's not a race. It's not a competition. If the Lord, the Lord, God is so good to me. Because I was so confused and I was beating myself. I said, God, I used to read chapters upon chapters a day, if not books a day. I said, what's wrong with me? I said, am I in a drought? Is there something wrong with me? I used to beat myself up. I tell you, I'm the hardest person on myself. Oh, thank you, sis. And remember, I, I had it was a few weeks ago. The Holy Spirit put it on me. If we are in a level, spiritual level, spiritual level of maturity, where we are meditating on one scripture for months, then that's what it is. My father is trying to speak to you 
speak to a very broken you through one scripture, then that's what it is. What One scripture for weeks. And then all of a sudden, boom, something broke through. And I was like, oh, it just, it took my breath away. And I started bawling, got on my knees, crying. I said, Lord, that's spiritual. That's not a race, y'all. Oh, I, Christina read the Bible. She on her fifth, sixth time reading the Bible. That don't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. Spiritual maturity is not looking at your neighbor and comparing your neighbor's, you know, abilities and gifts and strength and saying, how come not me? That's not maturity. Maturity is saying, I'm going to read this until I get a revelational truth about God. And then I want to see what he want to do with this. Hallelujah. Do you know, the word says he gives us a based on our ability. Each of us have an ability. Each of us have a different level of number of talents to flip. Each of us. We're going to be held accountable. But we can't. How are we going to be held accountable if we don't have a revelational truth yet? Father God, use me. Use me, Lord. How? We don't got revelation yet. My father not going to use you. You know why? Because when you go out. We, we, we step over God's grace. When we go out, I'm going to do healing. I'm going to go preaching. And you're not prepared for it in the spirit. You're not filled up with my father's revelation of truth. And you don't see people turning to Christ. You don't see healing immediately. Here go the wall. Maybe God don't want to use me. Oh, Lord, I'm going to cry, God. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. That is a lie from the pit of hell. He, everyone has a purpose. But it's when we step out on our own accord without true revelational knowledge of God. We set ourselves up for failure and hurt. Deep spiritual hurt. My father don't want to use me. Maybe that's not my gifting. Maybe that's not my calling. And here go the wall. Here go more time. Here go more distance. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Are you crazy? When we when we experience a uh, no, we we love God so much, we hold on to the no like nobody's business. God, you didn't answer me. I don't know why. And I'm confused. That no is gonna hurt. Why? You don't have revelational truth. I have a no. My daughter, my my only daughter is a no. No, not right now. In his timing. But it don't hurt me. I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt. Father God, I can't wait. If you just let me be a witness to my daughter speaking clearly and reading. That would be amazing, Lord. I don't I don't have hurt for that no. I did when I got healed. I went it deep into confusion. But I had to remind myself. Christina, God is still good. And he still loves your daughter. Calm down. Don't go, don't get crazy because you're in the flesh. I hope y'all got something. Thank you, Lord. There's this, I don't know who created this, like, these clicks in the church. I don't know who spiritual competition and who the best dressed costume in the church, who can be the loudest, who can fall out the heart. I don't, I don't know where that started, but we have to put aside spiritual competition. Um, we have to put up our nose, our hesitancy and doubt. We got to fast. We have to pray with say no. God, when I say, oh, I'm spoiled in the Lord, you got to say the same thing and you have to actually mean it. I, I told a bunch of people, I said, wow, I'm so spoiled in the Lord. I, I'm the only one slain in the spirit today at the whole school. I'm not better than anyone. I always come with the, Father God, I can't wait till you speak to me. I can't wait till you touch me. I can't wait till you give me a revelation or you come rest upon me heavily. Or you do that, that hot oil thing that you're like, 
warm butter being poured down my body. I'm always moving in expectancy that he loves me. That that. But you got to have that same revelational truth. I'm spoiled in the Lord. No, he loves me. No, it's no way. He loves me. There's no way he loves me. I'm not special. I, I, like, y'all have to know this. There, there's... <laughs> I just got a whole bunch of bad stories where I can relate to people who are in darkness. But I'm not, but I'm not special. I'm not more special than anyone. The word of God says he is not a respecter of persons. So if God is not a respecter of persons, and then we say at the same time, well, how come Christina can do it and I can't do it? There is something wrong on the inside of us, not God. Got to remember that. Yes. Father, there must be, I always count myself as a liar. That's also the word of God. Let every man be a liar and God be true. I say something wrong with me. I must be, I must be wrong somewhere. I, I'm counted a liar. I'm, I need correction. I always point, I always am, what did I do, Christina? Because you know God is a God of truth. You know he's, he's not a respecter of person. You know, you know he love you. You know, he he can do anything. Nothing is impossible. So what's going on here? It's always me. I, I self-evaluate. God, do I need correction? Did I say something wrong? It's not him. It's me. Mm -hmm. Even when you, like, sis. My sis is the reason why I'm on here right now. Because I got slain in the spirit. And I was, I've been sapped all day of energy, to be honest with you. <clears throat> but I'm on here for my sis. It is extremely hard to lay hands and pray for people that you love. It is so hard because here your body go into looking at deterioration. Here, here your body go into there's too many dang on machines. There's it, I, no did. I don't like this. This is it's too much going on. When it comes to family, we it's called in the world, it's called conflict of interest. Your conflict of interest cannot cannot outweigh the truth of God. It it can't. It can't. Your cousin got shot and can't feel his legs. We can what we do when we see our loved ones literally. We see our loved ones hurt and we're like, and that's my cousin, that's my, my brother, that's my mom, that's my grandma. Here we go with our flesh and emotions instead of saying, mm -mm, the truth of God is by his stripes we're healed. That for my father in, in Matthew 10, 1, I have authority over all kinds of sicknesses and diseases, epilepsy, hallelujah. Broken bones. L leprosy. Just look up leprosy. That blows my mind. Blindness. Deafness. Jesus Christ said in, in John 14 that we will do greater works than these also. This is a, this is a very old book. Got to be me. It, it got to be a hold up. A block. This kind can only be... Cast out by prayer and fasting, hesitancy in me can't be God. It has to be me. L literally, it has to be me. I love you, sis. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name, dear God. I don't know if they're not teaching this in the church. But I would encourage you to steal every single word, every single analogy. I take my words and put your own examples in it and, and insert that seed into the church. Hallelujah. It is hard. Mm hmm. And, and and what else is hard is um, that feeling of, I got to be the one to do it. No, 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 no. I'm Ari's mother. 
and I'm a God fear. I'm a praying mama now. I got to be the one to do it. I remove myself out the equation. Father God, even if you don't use me, even if you use an 18 year old young buck who is zealous and on fire for you, then let it be so. It don't have to be me. I remove myself. I've I'm, I've seen too much. What what the man what the boy father say? He said. Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, but I there's unbelief somewhere in there. I believe, help my unbelief. I took myself out the question and said, Lord, whenever, wherever you're going to do, regardless, regardless of all the little healings I've done in this life, this short life of mine, and my daughter's still not healed, I will never question my father. I have a revelation of truth of who he is. And and that is like, I I didn't prepare this. I just got on here because I said I was going to get on here. And I'm speaking from my heart. That That's the only way I know how to do it. You have, you have to submit you, your everything to God. Father God, I, I submit my thinking. I know it all. I submit my confusion. I, I submit tradition and religion. I don't even know I had. I said, you are the revealer. You're the one who pours wisdom. I'm nothing without you. So I'm going to sit here and wait. I literally have had that conversation. And boy, did he give me exactly what I asked for. Because I didn't look nowhere else. Don't get all these other books if you ain't read the word first. That's weird. Don't get all these other books and be like, oh, this going to help me to be a better Christian. And you ain't read the word of God first. That's strange. Don't do that. And kind of disrespectful. Just think of Abraham going to talk to you like, oh, you walked around with a pocket-sized Bible and you didn't read it. Just imagine that. So I want to pray. <clears throat> I, I want to pray. Um, and then as soon as you get like, the, like the healing that you were praying for or, or asking the Lord for or releasing, right? Release from healing. And then it, it'll build you up. The Bible. Start with the Bible. Don't get no other books until you have combed through this one. I'm okay, Luna. Ah, 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 ah. Sit. <laughs> Sit, please. Good girl. I'm okay. No, 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 no. Sit. Thank you. I'm going to pray. I'm all right. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. I love him so much. Let's pray. I was so hopeful I bought her a walking cane. No. What did Jesus say to Lazarus? What did Jesus say to the girl who was dead? What did Jesus say to the to the man at 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 the pool of that healing pool? Bethesda or something like that? I can't say it my tongue tied. He was like, he said, pick up your bed and go. Since I want you to get to a place where um the the complete healing is like nah you not even, you not gonna need a cane girl you gonna be or your whoever you gonna be able to outrun me I'm telling you to get up in the name of Jesus Hallelujah I'm gonna pray I love um love you baby girl. <clears throat> Okay. Abba Father, Lord, I bring up um, not just my brothers and sisters, but Father God, I bring up my children. I bring up myself to the foot of your throne, Lord, in, in, in humility and in sincerity, God. We need more wisdom. We need more 
um, opportunities to receive revelational truth, God. I ask right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that those um, who diligently seek your face but do not understand why when your word says the promises are yes and amen, they don't really feel or see the yes and amen. And that's hard to say, God, because it almost feels like it's disrespect or not believing your word or or like being smart or talking out the side of our necks. But God, it's because we don't understand. So we need help. Father God, your word talks about the lilies of the field and none of these are, are to be compared so if you gave Solomon that wisdom, Lord, Father God, he didn't have your son Jesus Christ's blood. And as much as I'm a fan of him, Father God, we are better than him because of your the blood of Christ. So I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you pour more wisdom in my brothers and sisters right now in the name of Jesus. That they receive how to rightly divide your word, how to continue to renew their minds in you. Father God, how to write these words on their on their hearts. Show them what it means, God. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Lord. Show them what that means, what that looks like. Father God, your word says you're not a respecter of persons, but yet subconsciously, indirectly, there is confusion. How can one one sister or brother in, in in the body can can have all these experience and not others? Father God, we need revival in the church, Lord. I don't I don't I know a church is not associated with like a building, but Father God, the people who do go to the building to to worship you, they're not hearing this from the church. They're not being edified. They're not being poured into. They're not they're not being being taught to forgive, being taught to say it's okay to have failures and mistakes. I still require you to exercise your gifts. Father God, there is no place. We need revelation and we need um we need um a revival in the church and we need a revival over the young people who are coming who are going to take um the next steps, who are gonna take over, Lord. I ask in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you pour wisdom right now in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit come down, Father God, over each and every one of your children and, 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 and me and also my children and my brothers and sisters' children, Lord. Father God, help us to write these things in our heart. Help us to know your son and, and to really just grasp this love. That we are loved by you in such a way that that you also give us gifts and authority. You love us so much that you want us to pour out love and healing and relief to other people. So Father God, I ask for the love of God, that understanding to be opened up um, to my brothers and sisters' minds. And Father God, every every tactic of the enemy, every trap, every demonic seed, no matter how small, Father God, I ask that you pour the Holy Spirit um, like a manifestation, especially in, in, in the stomach for the spirit of discernment. When they come across a lie, they cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. They start immediately casting out, Lord. Father God, we give you this time. We submit ourselves to you, Lord. We say, we say, um, thank you, because <laughs> your blessings are yes and amen to us. Your favor abounds towards us, Father. <laughs> we literally have eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say these things, but I don't know if we truly understand these things. That this flesh just houses the spirit, which was bought for a price. So, Father God, help us to understand that price. Help us to understand how much you really do love us, Lord. That we can share that, that revelation of love and truth to others, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, our King, amen.
<sighs> Thank you, God. It's also the love of God. He, he brought to me. Oh, the timing. I thought that was funny. Yes. So I hope this. Do you know that all of my, my talks on here are in, how do you call it? Impromptu? Did I say it right? All of them are impromptu. I, I, I never practice anything. The Holy Spirit gives me everything. He's awesome. <laughs> he makes me sound really smart. <laughs> he really does. I'll be like biting my tongue, but not today. Okay. Yeah, it's because I live on the military base. Oh, that one, the 10 o'clock one is for um, for the soldiers that died. And um, I, I cried. If you got spirit of sermon, oh my God. I cried for two weeks and I could not understand why I was crying. I was like, why am I crying every time I hear it? What does the horn mean? What does that song mean? And I found out it was for the dead soldiers. And I was like, makes sense now why I'm crying. You're all around beautiful. Thank you. Hello from Colorado. I'm from Colorado too. Called Taps. Yes. Okay. Taps. Taps. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's the sad, the saddest tap that they have. Yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> sad. From Belize. Oh, I'm honored. I, I'm always blessed when, when people from other countries tune in and I'm like, wow. The Lord is interesting. So I feel like wherever I go, no, I don't do one-on-ones. A few people have asked me, but um, one, the Lord hasn't called me to that. And, and two, I promise you, I don't feel like I know more than most people. Most people know what I'm saying. Most people have heard already what I've said. But sometimes putting two to two together, because it's a lot of scriptures. It's a lot. I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, sorry, my sneezes are so loud. <laughs> um, but you can met. Oh, hey, my love. I did. I made these earrings. I I love earrings, and since money's been weird. God is going to bless you. I just made them. Basically like $7. I made my own earrings. Isn't it cool? Look. I love earrings. Yeah. I love you guys. And we got... And let me tell you something. I, 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 think, I think maybe we should just start doing studies on like revelational truth. Oh, thank you, Kelly. You're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah, because it's hard to buy Native American stuff without it being blessed by spirits. So I got to make my own stuff. Oh, you know. Yeah. Ugh. Y'all, I got slain in the spirit today. In a white t-shirt. I said, Lord, are you funny. It's funny. Hey, my love. Revelational Truth Bible Study. Hallelujah. God bless you from the pulpit. <laughs> hey. Hey, Jazzy. Hey, baby girl. Hello, kids. What did it feel like? Oh. Uh, usually, you're not really aware. Um, So, I was... My hand was up like this. And I was... All of a sudden, I start crying in the spirit. So I was speaking in tongues, but I was bawling. I was crying in the spirit. And then somebody grabbed my hand. I felt a small, like, like somebody grabbed the tips. I think it was a girl in front of me, but I don't know. Nobody claimed. I think it was a girl in front of me. I don't know. Somebody grabbed my hand, and I just, my eyes were already closed, but I just felt like, how do you explain it? like light and loose at the same time and then all of a sudden i just 
a little bit and then I don't remember nothing. I remember waking up. Yeah, I checked my head. I don't have and it was between like the auditorium seats, which are like super I have no like bruises or cuts or I don't have anything. So when you fall in the Holy Spirit, you you don't get hurt, which is just God catching you, really. <laughs> She just started Special Olympics. Oh, that's cool. You being in a, a good light dream. Yes. Yes. There's nothing. People were, some people were like real frantic. I don't think they've ever been slain or seen anyone slain in the spirit. They're like, oh my God, are you okay? And I was like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm okay. But I could barely like talk because I'm, you feel when you wake up, you feel drunk. And you can't move anything. You can't see anything because your eyes, they do this like weird flutter thing. It was doing like that, like really fast. And But I could hear everything. It's weird. It's really strange, but in a respectful way. And um, then when you finally get your energy back, it's still like noodles, boiled noodles. Oh, it's so loose. Two people had to help me up. I said, first of all, this is disrespectful. I don't think I weigh that much. Anyways. <laughs> they picked me up. They put me on a chair and I, I was slumped in the chair because I was I was just noodles. <laughs> Did y'all need the two biggest men? I'm just saying. Whatever. Thank you. I'm kidding. You you guys know I have <laughs> I have jokes. <laughs> I'm not all the way there yet. Pray for me. Just pray for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, <clears throat> you know when it gets really creepy when people are repeating the words of the Lord to you? That is when it gets very scary. Uh, remember the dream I told you? It don't belong to you. It belonged to Jesus Christ. Why did one of the security people that picked me up, why did he say it to me? He had his hand on my shoulder. He said, it doesn't belong to you. And I looked at him, and I was just staring at him, and I just started bawling. I said, no, he didn't. <laughs> uh, what? What you say? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He said, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Christ. The only difference is in my dream... I think it was <clears throat> St. John. That's what. Oh, thank you, Lord. He's in my dream. He said it belongs to Jesus Christ. That's the only difference. Ah, oh, it was weird. It's spooky. <laughs> Holy Spirit can be spooky sometimes. <clears throat> okay, I love you guys very, very much. Never boring. Even though I'm in a white, sh I love. I was like, is my back jacked up? I was like, I was like looking drunk. I was like, is my back dirty? <laughs> it was terrible. And I was, I, I apologize. I said, I'm so sorry if I, because there was people standing there. There was people standing there. He had the joy of the Holy Spirit. But couldn't stop laughing after hours of being slain. I've been there. Uh, mine was not ours. Thank the Lord. <clears throat> My friend is trying to contact a demon. Now the issue I got with that is. Why is that your friend? You separate yourself from people. Like that. You being complacent with they summons and demons. They going to snatch you up right along with the rest of them. Yes, orange juice because of the vitamin C. Yes. Look at my baby sis. I actually want everyone to follow um, Ashonda Six, please. And I want um, whatever the Lord puts on you to continue to pour into her. <clears throat> There's a lot been going on with me. You guys know, behind scenes. So I'm not able to be there as often as I want. Um, so I, if you guys could help. There's a bunch of prayer warriors on here. And people who do healing. There is a sister on here. I don't know if anybody peeped it out. There is a, I have, we have a sister on here. Her name is Deborah. 
Her name is Deborah. She quiet, she barely comments. She always type a dove emoji. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, she is something else. And every time I see her, I be like, oh, Jesus, please. That's the tightest two woman I'm looking for. I can feel it every time. <clears throat> Mmm, dirt. That don't sound right to me. Let's look it up. Dirt. So soil. Was it? Was it like rich? Was it rich dirt? I'm supposed to be going to bed. D. Nope. No dirt. It's probably soil. <clears throat> Remember what the Lord says about soil. Good soil. I'm sorry. My worldly tattoo is bothering me. I'm sorry. It's old school. <clears throat> it's old. I apologize. I'm going to cover up. I just, I was hot. First of all, why is soil not in here? That's weird. Let's look over here. Oops. That's animals. Why is so not in here? Oh, this is a um I'm very picky with dream books. If this if they don't have it's a dream book. If they don't have the word of God and this don't come from a prophetic pastor or, you know, evangelist, I wouldn't buy it at all. But it has, um, you know, test the spirit. I'm going to show you to you I'm gonna, so you can take a sh But it's on my link tree, too. I made like a link tree. And y'all got to use it because it took me two days to figure it out how to work it. Do you understand? I, I, I'm not that... Tech, with technology, not really. Do you know all the roses and stuff y'all be giving me? I did not know that was real money. A year or something later, I found out it was like $300. I was like, what is $300? What is this? Had no idea. Because I'm slow with the stuff. <clears throat> I don't understand why soil is not in here. Lord, am I not... I know how to spell, God. I know how to spell. Dirt. Dirt coming out of the mouth. That's bothering me. Dirt. Death. Diamonds. You got dinosaur, but not dirt? Okay. Let's go to... Let me double check, because I feel like I'm losing my mind. Soil. <clears throat> That is so strange. Wait, what about Earth? Let's look at Earth. It says abode of humankind, symbol of humanity or carnality, lack of being spiritual. This is my book. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking of. Oops, I'm sorry. I have a bad habit of not charging my phone. See how they have like scriptures everywhere? Scripture, 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 scripture. You got to find it from the word of God. If it don't come from the word of God, then don't buy it. Thank you, Lord. Um, I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. Bear. I'm always being chased by big old brown bear. But can never break through a window or a door. Tells me it's spiritual. Um, this morning I woke up. 
Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen what happened in Venezuela with the money. How money was blowing in the wind in the sewers. Did y'all see that? That's all I'm going to say. We're not going to be in a place of fear at all, though. Bear means danger, wicked person or spirit, vindictiveness. Y'all haven't seen that about Venezuela? They were making purses out of cash. Because it was cash was useless. That's how the inflation went. They were making trinkets and stuff to sell in the street with cash. Yeah, it's, it's not worth nothing. Exactly. It's not worth anything. But to make folded up purses and, and trinkets and stuff. I woke up this morning and I said, Jesus, is the American dollar going to fall like that? It have all this cash and can't buy, can't buy bread, milk, regular things. But then this ties into what I was saying. I keep seeing something weird. Do y'all see a fog? Do y'all see a fog right here? Like right on the side. Am I tripping? Any insects are bad. <clears throat> Remember last year I was saying that the, um, last year I was saying, I don't remember what month it was, but I was saying I saw Christian communities and this person was a seamstress. And has wool. This person has a, is a shepherd. Gives the wool to a seamstress. Makes clothes. This person's a teacher. This person does milk and butter. This person has eggs. This one's, This person has. Um, this person has all the fruits and vegetables. And we were buying and selling within our own. The body of Christ. Because we're not going to receive the mark. Remember? That's what I saw. And then this year. Last year, I also said, start moving money out the bank and keeping cash in your house. And now I'm starting to see stuff come about and I'm like, <clears throat> it's coming. We're not going to move in fear though. We're going to be fine. Those who hear from the Lord it says bears danger, wicked person or spirit vindictiveness, evil, something that is after what you possess. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my, my back. Um, I don't know. This is what the Lord told me. I have no idea. This morning I woke up and I got I got that vision of just money being like leaves on the street. It was weird. Yeah, that was for bear. <clears throat> Does anyone um I'm sorry. Does anyone need to receive Christ? I wonder if my phone is dirty. No, because this is the other side. It's still foggy. It's foggy in here. Yeah, I bind that in the name of Jesus. I mean, but let me tell you something. When when witches are after you in your dream, demons is after you in your dream, bears and animals and snakes after you in your dream, they pressed about you. It makes me laugh. Oh, you're so scared of me. You gotta send things in my dream. You gotta try to make me have covenants in this dream. You trying to make me have fear in dreams, cause you just know who I am. Do you feel the way, Dukes? <clears throat> oh, you're talking to me. Um, I forgot you call me Dukes. Um, too much going on. <clears throat> That's a lot going on with me, too. Promise. But um, we all have, I won't say we all have backslided, but we all have fallen short of the glory. Going back to we going back to women <clears throat> drinking. You have to 
you have to be honest with yourself. It's temporary. That's why you got to keep buying it. That's why you got to keep sleeping with them. That's why you got to keep smoking. That's why you got to find another club, another outfit. It's temporary. As soon as you be honest with yourself and say, I'm tired with these temporary satisfactions, these temporary reliefs. Say, I dedicate, I dedicate myself to the Lord. <clears throat> Way too far. That's, you got to, you got to cut that out. Because now you're being disrespectful. As much as I love you. Now it's you saying, I've done too much. Now I can't be cleansed of the blood of Jesus. Now we're putting our, our sin and our past mistakes over the blood of Jesus. Nothing. He says he throws those things into the sea of forgetfulness. We don't. He do. So does he separate himself from us or do we separate ourselves from him? There's murderers. Murderers are forgiven. The what my sister said, the blood covers everything. It says we are without blemish. Hallelujah. It's nothing. Now, the only thing that's a problem is you taking too long to repent. Okay, you made a mistake. And we've all done it. I love you, but get back on the horse. I love you, but you know better. I'm not about to baby you. You know better. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Father God, I messed up. I repent. I need help to not do this again. But I will never leave you. Because your word says you'll never leave and forsake me. Father God, you have to repent. That's it. I'm sorry, Lord, help me. Your love covers, my, my sister or brother said, love covers a multitude of sins. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Not even yourself, poor thing. As strong as you think you are, as, as much as you want to condemn yourself, there's nothing. We do it. We turn away. We make mistakes. That has happened. I was wondering why you was on my, y'all, all, all, every single one of y'all was on my mind. I said all your names. Riley, Ashanti, Mar, or I think Mar and Ashanti. And I'm missing somebody. And then you. Summer. And Summer. That's the other one. I said all your names what, last week in my prayers on the way to school. Do Holy Ghost party stop? I have never heard that in my life. Wow, she popped up. Yeah, you know? <laughs> all y'all did. Hey, repenting. Oh, uh, repenting means I'm gonna look it up. I used to memorize this this um definition. <clears throat> oh, I can spell today. says the action of repenting sincere regret or remorse there's more to this so basically the way i learned it is um doing an about face doing a 180 so you go to god in acknowledgement of your sins and father god i messed up i have i got saved right i got saved y'all won't believe me i have a picture i think i have a picture to prove it <laughs> I got saved year one. I beat the brakes off this lady. She at the bus stop picking up kids. All of my kids right there. Now me, I'm five foot four, but I'm off the chain. So I'm standing there like this. She doing like this in my face. I said, now time out. I said, now time out. I said, you're not about that life. I said, don't put your hands on me. I said, you can call me whatever you want. Don't put your hands on me. And she pushed me. I said, I saved, love God, cracked her. You think we don't make mistakes in the world? Man, we make mistakes. Cracked her. 
she tried to grab me and I think she like she dug her nail. I don't think I I, I had like a little scar. I don't remember where it is. She dug her nail in me. I beat the brakes off of her. I gave her I when I say old school Molly Wapped. Old school Molly Wapped. She won't do it no more. I bet you that. She one of those where um God forgive me. Hmm. She one of those because she's married to a black man that she thinks she's about that life. And I had to put some deep correction on her. Bless her heart. Do you understand my children got off the bus? And they said, Mommy. They said, why you whip that, that lady like that? Do you understand my heart sunk? My heart sunk. I said, Jesus. I said, what is wrong with me? Kristen, he's still off the chain. Your kid's used to you being like this. That's crazy. That's not normal. Them getting off the, the bus smooth as ice. Tell my mommy, why you whoop that why you whoop that lady? I said, oh my gosh, Christina. Saved. Year one. No, it was in the year one. It wasn't a full year. I turned to God and said, God. There is a, a a reckless anger, and it's not, I wasn't even angry. I wasn't even angry. But there's this thing on the inside of me that I always need to prove myself tough. Prove myself is, don't try me. It's just always in the inside of me. Because, you know, the abuse, whatever. But I'm out of the abuse. There's no excuse now, right? Especially when you come to Christ. So I went to Christ and I said, God, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to, to stop this. I, I asked God for a pause. That's all I asked him. I said, Lord, if you can give me a pause so I can choose you. Let me, let me get a chance to choose you. Every day, every time, I won't say day, every time I've been in a situation where I can feel myself about to snap capital S here go to pause Christina choose God and I close my mouth and I walk away I admit my wrong to God I say father I'm sorry help me and I turn away from it don't do it anymore don't do it anymore repentance is you getting tired of being tired Repentance is self-evaluating. Repentance is, I love God so much, I depend on him for everything. Being sober-minded, not relying on temporary pleasures. And when we make mistakes, say, it's humility. I know I can't do this on my own. I know I need you. Repentance is a form of humility. I need you. Uh, being a Christian and whooping people at the kids bus stop is not okay. It's not okay. It, people think it's a funny story, but I cannot tell you the level of brokenheartedness I felt when my children were nonchalant. That's not normal. Mommy, why you whoop that lady? I'll, the sound, the way he said to sentence my son Aiden, it will never leave my mind. It's forever seared. Mommy, why you whooped that lady like that? And the bus was there. The kids is barely getting off the bus. The bus got windows. Everybody's, everybody, all the moms at the bus stop was scared of me. All the children were scared of me. My kids walk around like nothing. They used to their mama acting a fool. It was, it was hard to take a look at yourself and say, Christina, you sick. You you just you just shameless girl. You just beating people mamas up with their kids watching through the bus stop windows. That's crazy. That's not normal. I had to repent to God and say, Lord, help me. And I can try to justify it all I want to. Oh, but she touched me first and I warned her. So she knew better. No, that's not humility. That's not, that's not, that's not humility. Let's keep it real. That's not humility. 
That's trying to be justified in my flesh, justified in, in enabling my old behavior in old ways, not, not putting to death the old man. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But since I did that, don't think that I didn't have many opportunities to go off. Sure did. Don't think because I repented once that I'm not struggling not to have the spirit of slap on somebody. Sure do. I do. <laughs> My repentance is humility. I need him and I'm sorry. And I need to put to death the old man. There's nothing wrong with repentance. But repentance is very serious. If you don't mean it, don't even have that conversation with God. As if he can't even read your heart. Don't even do it. Don't waste his time. Seriously. If you don't really mean repentance, don't do it. Don't repent one day. And next week, you got to go back to him with the same thing. Keep your mouth closed until you're ready to do that. Don't waste his time. He can read your heart. <sighs> Forgiving yourself sometimes. I've been there. Um, what what that is is, and it's gonna be hard to hear, sis. Um, it's gonna be hard to hear. What that is is self centeredness. Um, the the woe is me has more significance than the joy the joy we're supposed to receive in the Lord than, than, than the love of God. What that means is also somebody else, whoever in the past or present told you you wasn't worth being forgiven. Whoever planted that demonic false seed and impression of forgiveness and now you can't really do it for yourself. That got to, that's a stronghold got to be broken off of you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sis, I love you. But I have, I have never, <laughs> I've been to jail four times for fighting, beating the brakes off of men and women. I have, um, what have I done? Um, when I was in the world now. Slept outside of my marriage three times. I said, you want to play? Oh, bet. I got you. I got you. With those clubbing days and drinking days. When I was tired of being the wife. Oh, my gosh. It was horrible. Did you want to play? I know how to play. Oh, you got the right one. Let's be off the chain. I used to be dancing on people's tables. And they used to let me. Because, you know, the enemy. He sees a lot of God on people. So if you're in the world, he want to keep you in the world. I used to get away with stuff that most people couldn't get away with. You can't dance on no bar like that movie. I don't know the name of that movie, but you can't dance on people's bars. Crazy. Repentance, putting to death the old man. Saying, God, I submit myself to you. And I know I can't do it on my own. Okay. You know, black folks, we say goodbye like a whole bunch of times. Did y'all know that? It's called CP time. Okay. I love y'all so much. Um, I hope y'all have peace. And everyone who heard the word about the blockage of healing, um, I, I really do hope that you received and um, I'm going to try to download this this one so I can put it on the YouTube because I feel like people need to hear it. But yes, thank, thank the Lord. Glory to God. Okay. Love y'all. I don't know how to put YouTube on there anymore. Um, I have to figure it out. Oh, yeah, I know why. Linktree was trying to charge me to put my YouTube link. I think that's what that was. Okay. I love you guys. Oh, I made them. Because you know a lot of these people, um, some of them do witchcraft stuff. So you got to make your own stuff. It's super easy. Hobby Lobby. Love you guys.
I'm good night. I love you, Mucho. Yeah, and keep me in prayer. I need prayer for what I need prayer for? Peace. I need prayer for tires. I'm praying the for the I'm praying for a miracle over my tires. Uh, and I keep looking every day. Because God is good. I prayed for my tires, which are balding. I want them to be snow tires. So I keep... You made them snow tires today? Did you add a millimeter of tire thread today? <laughs> Pray that the Lord will do um, a miracle on my car. So I don't be sliding and have the call in the name of Jesus in the snow. <laughs> okay. I love you very much. When I tell you... My situation is weird. Um, my Bible. My situation. I need my other Bible. My situation is weird. Um, I can't spend money. Um, even though it's a priority. It's, it's just sad. But anyways. I'm not worried about it. Because the Lord always sees me through. And... Um, this I'll be divorced on the 30th so pray for me and I love you okay bye guys I love your cowboy hat by the way okay <laughs>